Have you ever considered setting limitations for yourself while working on your art? This idea may seem counterproductive for a creative practice, however, I think setting periodic limits on your artwork, whether in color palette, materials, or size, can actually increase your creative discoveries. If you tend to get overwhelmed by the endless artistic possibilities there are to choose from, maybe this can help you too. Hi friends! If you're new here, I'm Ashley, an artist who began following my dream of creating art full-time. Join me as I share my experiences on this art journey and stick around at the end for a Q&A. I decided to set limitations for these paintings to narrow my focus on values, the effects of monochromatic color palettes, and feminine subject matters. I was listening to the Art Juice podcast and was introduced to this idea of placing limits on your artwork. The speakers talked about why and when limiting yourself is beneficial to your creativity. For one, they take away endless options and help you to clearly see patterns and improvements in your art because so few variables are involved. It was easier for me to focus on value mixing in these paintings because I didn't have to worry about different colors or hues. Limits force you to work with what you've got and discover creative ways to achieve what you want. They're a good challenge to give yourself for an extra project that happens alongside your main work. Because it's self-contained, you can release all expectations. It can be a place to explore a new topic or creative expression that you can bring into your usual work. This exploration of limits allowed me to create something different from my typical portraits. I would have never chosen to use such a vibrant monochrome color scheme on my own, but I love the energy of this piece, and I discovered how interesting the transparency of alizarin crimson is. It's something I definitely want to explore more of in the future. Of course I'm not saying that you must always use limits, and you should even break your own limits from time to time, but maybe now you could consider how limitations could work for you.
I didn't notice it when choosing these references, but they share many similarities. Both subjects have strong eye contact, they are both women of color, of Asian descent, and have one significant jewelry piece and earring. The themes or underlying stories of my work don't always present themselves right away. Like with this piece, it came to me over time as I sat thinking about my connections to the subject matter. It was interesting to see how my personal experience as an Asian woman affected how I painted these women, how I viewed them, how I related to their experiences. Carving familiar facial features that others deem exotic, strong jawlines, high cheekbones, dark hair, things I considered different about myself growing up that I would now never want to change. Wishing little me could have seen such a painting. Thank you so much for joining me today on my art journey. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I thought we would end it a little bit differently. I was on Instagram and I asked you guys if you had any questions that you really wanted me to answer at the end of this art vlog and you guys gave me tons of great questions so I'm going to try to answer as many as I can. Hopefully I can answer the biggest ones that a lot of people ask. So yeah, let's get into it. How is a normal paint day scheduled? Because we're all short on time, right? So I got a few questions about this and my normal paint day schedule is I will block off four hours before lunch and then I'll have lunch and then it will be 
another four hours after lunch. I know that seems like a lot. It seems like eight hours of straight painting, but there's a lot that goes into setting up for oil painting. I have to get out my palette, set up all my colors, you know, gesso the canvas, sand it down, wait for that to dry, gesso it again, find a reference and actually get into the painting a few hours into that. And on top of that, when you film, when you paint, I think it takes probably twice as long because you're stopping every few seconds to move the camera, set it up again. However, if painting or art making is not your full-time job, I would suggest blocking off a few hours in the morning to just dedicate to art making. If you're not prioritizing it kind of in the beginning of the day, at least for me, I find it really hard to stop doing all the other things that I need to do and then get into art making later in the day. So I had quite a few questions asking about my art journey. Did I go to school for art or am I self-taught? What motivated me to become a full-time artist? And I talked about this briefly in a previous video that I'll link, but did not go to school for art actually. I have a degree in marketing. But I have always been interested in art, always been like the little creative kid who was drawing all the time and as I got older and became a teenager I started to practice more seriously and I was self-taught then just literally looking up YouTube videos how to draw this how to draw faces people anything I could and how I got into oil painting actually is I discovered Bob Ross <laughs> and I watched some videos of his online began oil painting landscape and we're not anything good but that was kind of my first introduction into oil painting and I kind of fell in love with it from there. I wanted to go to school for art but I wasn't confident enough in my skills to really make a big deal about it I guess. Make it seem like this is the one thing I want to do. I just I didn't know that for sure yet and my parents wanted me to try a different field that was maybe a little more stable you know. They just wanted to make sure that I would be doing something that I could support myself with. So I went to school for architecture for a few years because that was still kind of a design creative field and then I decided I didn't want to do that and I took a few art courses in college some painting design drawing classes they were from a community college so they weren't anything too technical and then I applied to an art college in my area where I grew up and I didn't get in uh, so I kind of just transitioned to a different career kind of gave up on art for a few years I think decided well I guess that's not for me even though I still loved art and had a passion for it, I took a break from it for a while. And then I graduated with a degree in marketing, worked in that field for a little while, and decided, you know what, I think I really need to pursue art. My love for art came back and I just, I couldn't ignore it this time. And thankfully, it has paid off. And so I am making a bit of a living, it's nothing crazy, from my art making, selling a few pieces and from YouTube, obviously, thanks to you all. So thank you. To wrap this long rambling story up, I do not have a degree in art. I have always loved art making and after I graduated and tried a different field, I just knew that I had to give art a chance and I'm very glad I did. Where should we start for oil painting? I would appreciate it if you share your advice about it. So I had quite a few questions about getting started with oil painting. What supplies do I need? What brand should I buy? Do I need everything when I start out? The basic oil supplies that you'll need to get started are brushes, the paint, oil mediums, and maybe a solvent or thinner if you want to use that. You don't have to. Uh, you'll need a palette and obviously something to paint on. So that can be canvases or you can start out with paper or the little panels too. Those work great. So the type of brushes that I started out with, I think I have some here, are just basic Michaels Artist Loft brushes. I also used these Princeton. They're called the Ashley brand actually but it's spelled differently than my name. You're going to want to get brushes with stiffer bristles. Usually in the store, it'll say, you know, these brushes are for oils, these for acrylics, these are for watercolors. Um, so get oil brushes, obviously. Get a few different sizes. Some flat ones are always great. And then paints, Scamblin 1980 brand is a great student grade paint. If you're just starting out, they're not as expensive. And you're gonna wanna get white, probably, a black, and then the primary colors. So a yellow, a red, a blue, 
and if you get warm and cool versions of those colors, you can basically mix any color you want to. The way that you thin oils down is with either a solvent like Gamsol or paint thinner or with oils that you add to the paint like linseed oil, safflower oil, things like that. And that's gonna make your paint thinner because you're gonna wanna start with thinner layers of paint and then work up to thicker layers of paint. If you don't want to use paint thinner because it's not so great for you to be breathing in all the time, especially if you can't paint in a well-ventilated area, you can just clean your brushes with linseed oil or an oil that takes paint off your brushes. Canvases and acrylic gesso. Gesso is important to prime the surface that you're working on so that the oil paint doesn't just seep right into the paper or the canvas and that's going to over time break down the materials of that and they just your paintings won't last as long. The second question kind of going along with beginnings of oil paintings is all right I've got all the supplies but what do I actually do? What should I do to start painting? What should I do to start getting better? And I would suggest to begin painting monochromatic still lifes. You'll set up just a few things on your desk and you're going to paint that using just black and white to get a grasp of the values down is really what's going to help you the most when you move on to trying to replicate the colors that you're seeing. What kind of music do you usually listen to while painting? So I will listen to either just a lo-fi playlist on Spotify, something relaxing and calming that doesn't have words because when I listen to music with words, I cannot help but sing along. I don't know why. And obviously when I'm filming, <laughs> I can't be talking because I want to capture some of the sounds of like the brush on the canvas and things like that. I have been listening to like a calming cinematic soundtrack or I'll listen to some art podcast. One is called The Week in Art, I believe. Kind of just talks about, you know, current art events happening, art shows happening, paintings that are selling, new artists and like work that they're working on and the concepts that that's kind of been driving them. And the last question I'm going to end on is, what inspires you to not just make art, but to be a better artist? And this is a great question, and it kind of goes along with what is your inspiration? Where do you want to take your art in the future? And this is something I think about a lot and something that I haven't shared too much, I think, on here. But there is always that pressure to make art that is meaningful, you know, as artists. And you absolutely do not have to make art that has a deep, serious meaning, whatever. Art can be art just for art's sake, you know, and there is absolutely a place for all kinds of arts. But for me, I do feel like I want to make art that has a deeper meaning. That's something that I've always been interested in. Art as a way to communicate, you know, either something I'm going through, social commentary on something. And the way that art can connect people about an issue, about a deeper meaning, through just a visual. I want to have an added layer, a story behind something, a way it connects to me. That's why I think I write poem for some of my pieces to give that backstory or that added insight into what was going on in my mind when I was creating it. So yeah, that is something that I'm trying to improve on. Not improve, but you know, just a direction that I wanna take my art. Well, that is all the questions for today. Thank you so much for sending those to me. They were great. If you have any other questions you want me to answer in the future, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or comment or subscription. It really helps me out so I'm able to create more content for you. For now, I will see you next time.